Well, this is start as you mean to go on, isn't it? Uh, it is only flute this picture's first, but let's see what we've got. We've got what looks like a burnt bronze and tan Mark 23, cable tied to what I can only describe as a fucking Meccano set. I think everything is summed up in this picture by the absolute look of gormlessness in this guy's face. Like, there, there is nothing going on. Like, he's sat there not even knowing if there's a skirmish going on. This might not even be a skirmish site. I reckon people just snuck up on this guy and they found him living rough in their local woods. He doesn't know what's going on. As far as he's concerned, he's trying to stop the Krites from coming down and fucking eating all the livestock. Uh, th this really does sum up Airsoft for me completely. Next up, we've got a guy with the lumberjack shirt sporting a cummy badger with the world's cheapest dot sight. This does nothing to inspire me. This is the, um, well, I've been doing airsoft for exactly one year loadout. Not much to say about this, really. Ah, oh, now this man's turned up to the scene of an earthquake. What's going on with his fucking leg? Look at his knees. I know what's happened. The guy has come in with a flying knee at the safe zone, and he's literally such a badass that he's knocked the whole fucking building down. However, he has put his fucking knee out of socket. Look at that. Good God. See, this could be a, a nice looking gun, it's nearly there, but unfortunately, you know, he's got the umbilical cord sticking out, the thing's pistol grip. This is the absolute look of a speed softer. You know, the trigger is so far back that if a butterfly shits in a different country, that thing will go off. The stock, I hate the stock, like I really, it looks like a Lego man's boot. Look at it, it's horrible. Now that is a nice little paint job. What is that, an Aries? That's a nice little paint job, I like that. That's a good little paint job. Will say, that scope, like, I understand you're probably wearing a face mask, um, but uh, it's a really fucking high up scope. You know, that that is, uh, that's gonna really fuck with, with, your, uh, with your accuracy. Oh, we've got another one with a fucked up leg. Look at that, his left kneecap is all the way down on his shin. Like, um, imagine how he walks. You know, I bet when he takes his boots off, he's actually not got feet at the end of them. I reckon he walks on the top of his fucking toes like an Independence Day alien fucking biomechanical suit. That, there's a little bloke living inside him, little tiny alien, peddling the fucker around. Oh, Pedo Bear's got himself a nice little gun there. I fucking love a Barrett. I really love a Barrett. Your mum's not going to love it when she sees the Barrett on the fucking sofa. My three problems with this is Pedo Bear in the top left. The little tiny scope that's on the rifle. Do yourself a favour, mate. Take it off. Put a big scope on there. And um, bottom left, right by the coffee table. Is that a cum stain? Ah, what's... So Pedo Bear's sat there. He's on the fucking Minnie Mouse pillow next to the rifle, firing out his fucking knuckle children. Ah, no. no, no. You didn't think that picture through, dude. Here we've got a tan scar in a fitted padded rifle case. How interesting. This man's head appears to be floating above his shoulders. It's, have you got an abnormally long neck? What's going on there? What, what is that? Uh, ugh. What a freak. Now, I didn't think this one could get any worse, you know, than, than a cheap version of an HK416 with a gry pod on it, with a suppressor and whatever is going on with the electrical tape around the front of the peck box, like, what, what is that? I don't know. I didn't think it could get any worse, but then as we move into the next picture, we realize it does get worse. It's got a tan stock on it. How many scope mounts and risers do you want? I mean, is, is, are you, is your chin really, really long? Or is this the rifle that belongs to the guy with the fucking floating head? You know, his head floats so fucking high above his neck. He's got to put fucking risers and scope rings and everything else. Honestly, like, why have your scope that high? That serves no purpose. And don't say it's because the fucking front sight's in the way. Just fucking put the front sight down, you know? Just, just, if your scope is that high, you're not shooting fuck all. But, let's face it, airsofters. Now, this airsoft is over at his nan's house, you can tell. You know, she's in the middle of cleaning up, ready for, uh, ready for dinner. She's got a scouring pad out. He's left his radio control car. Uh, the, the carpet 
I'll change that carpet. That's a fucking awful carpet. Looks like another scar. Uh, little bits have changed on it. I guess it's better looking than a normal scar, but meh. This guy's got his finger stuck up his ass. This is what airsofters do when the marshals are fucking moaning at you to get out of the safe zone. Guys, can you get out of the safe zone, please? Come on, time for the next game. Everyone's waiting for you. Everyone's waiting for you. Most people have lost a glove, and that's why they can't play airsoft. This cunt's lost his finger. Because it's stuck up his ass. How to make the world's most front-heavy, ugly motherfucking gun even more front-heavy and uglier. Well done, you. You have literally earned yourself a biscuit. That's a fucking great-looking AK. Get rid of that fucking handguard. Dude, get rid of the handguard. I told you. Get rid of the fucking handguard. That is absolutely abysmal with that handguard on there. The rest of the gun, absolutely fucking gorgeous. Look at it. Um, it's an LCT. It's amazing. But please, get rid of that fucking handguard. It just looks atrocious. No, if you've done it wrong, you should have no carry handle. You should have a black lower receiver and a tan upper receiver. Oh, the world wanker champion's arrived. There he is. High capper gold match. With an M4 mag grafted on the bottom with a hose so he can't take it off. Somebody else has put their gun on their bed. You may not know this, this bed set came from Ikea. I know because my wife got the same ones. You know how much fluff collects on that sheet? More than any other bedspread you've ever had. It's fucking crazy. If you've got cats, you know the problem with that bedspread. So fuck the guy's gun. That bedspread is, is pretty harsh. But it's a nice bedspread. I do like Ikea. Some of their stuff's pretty cool looking. Now look at this poor little seal pup. Taken from the wild and just thrown into a CQB environment. Look at the shock look on his face. Look at him. He's cross-eyed with how shocked he is. A seal pup shouldn't be fucking living in this kind of environment. This guy has opted to uh, defend his mum's living room. He's fully tacked up. He's ready to go. Now he has been on duty for a while, so at some point he's going to have to go and use the kitty litter tray behind him. Thankfully, it's got fresh litter in there. He's good for a couple of days. If he doesn't drink all the water that's next to him, there, then he should be all right. Uh, he, can, he can defend the household until mum gets back from bingo. He's going to be fine. This poor bastard can't afford a handguard for his MP5Ks. Uh, he also can't afford a tumble dryer or a washing machine, which is why he's very clearly been washing his clothes outside in that large truck and uh, he's going to be drying it, as you can see, hanging up in the background over some wood. This guy is so close. He's so close to having a nice gun, you know? He's got the M4. He's got a decent fucking handguard and foregrip on it. He's got a decent pistol grip. The vert grip's all right. He's got the open sights. He's got the cool stock. He's, he's so close. But again, it must belong to the guy with the floating head. I was thinking about getting a G36. I have looked at the Spetzer Arms G36K and been told it's the same gun as the Ares one. I'm not sure if this is true and it stopped getting it. Oh, this is going to be a fucking treat, isn't it? Like, the, the grammar, the grammar and just, oh, fuck me dead. Uh, well, the answer is, um, is it the same gun? Honestly, I don't fucking know. Which gun did you buy thinking it would be an absolute bag of spanners, but it turned out to be good? Actually, the PPS gas shell ejecting shotguns. I'd seen a fair few of the pre-production ones. I got to test a few, and they were just fucking terrible. They were so shit. And then I think it was possibly eHobby Asia had them on special, and they were so cheap. It was like, my God, let's just get the fuck rid of these. And I was like, Okay, I'll take a punt. I mean, they were so cheap, it was like pocket change. So I bought like fucking three of them, and honestly, never failed. The, the shells all hold gas, it fires BBs out properly, it ejects every shell. Um, it's not quite a fucking Cam 870, but it's a pretty fucking cool gun. It's just not failed me, and obviously, being a PPS gas shotgun, I really fucking thought it would. What is your least favourite of the airsoft teching myths? Classics include R hop for better everything and longer barrels are more accurate. See now that's actually quite difficult because uh, a longer barrel is inherently more accurate than a short barrel, you know? Your fucking AK with a 455 barrel in it is going to be infinitely more accurate at range than something like a fucking MP5K. 
But yeah, you know, you, if it doesn't matter how fucking long your barrel is, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's look at the VSR 10. Uh, the G-Spec's got a fucking tiny barrel, but how good is the gun? We know it's a good gun. Well, you guys won't remember uh, a few of the little things we used to have going on. Like, way back when, there was a thing where if your gun was firing too fast, like, you know, literally uh, either too too speedy in its rounds, you know, too many fucking BBs going down the barrel, uh, right fire too much, you are going to have issues whereby your BB stop in the barrel and suck back into the barrel, colliding with each other and causing blockages and BBs to be stuck together. That was a thing people actually fucking spoke about. That was a real fucking thing. And you believe it. It's something you actually fucking believe. And then you realise that that is just, it, that, that is, it can't happen. You know, it just it just can't happen. Um, the other things, you know, if you put uh, a, a level one battery in your in your gun instead of a 7.4, it becomes more powerful. I've had people that fucking airsoft sites all the time saying, okay, I'll put a 7.4 in it, see if it drops the power. And you sit there and you roll your fucking eyes. And then you get that one instance where one guy ever put a 7.4 in his gun and then the power actually did drop by about 15 FPS in semi-auto. And there's no fucking reason for it. It just did, and you go, it, it's just, it doesn't happen. It can't happen, yet the cunt stood there and it fucking happened. And it blows your little mind. You can't fucking believe this fucking shit has happened, but it has. So the shit that, are, that really bugs me, you know, it really is that guns that are pumping out 50, 60 rounds a second are going to have the same range and accuracy as a gun that's punting out 25 a second. You know, same barrel, same power, all this stuff is with the same, no, it won't. It isn't, and it fucking ain't. And there's still no one that's been able to show me that they can punt out 50, 60 rounds a second with a fucking DSG, and these fucking BBs are going to go all the fucking way over there and have the same range and accuracy. There is a drop off whether you like it or not. I mean, that is one that really fucking peeves me. But I think the biggest one, it's the fads. There are fads that people, they, they do a thing. One person does a thing, and for some reason, somebody else cottons on and they do it as well and it doesn't make a bit of sense but they do it like it doesn't happen anymore people washing their ammo they wash their bbs to make them more accurate that doesn't happen anymore because everyone knows it's a fucking load of shit but a few years back there were people literally going out there and washing all of their ammo um, and getting rid of the coating on the ammo uh, to make it more accurate and what's happening is they're, they're, they're washing the shiny finish off and in a lot of cases creating drag in their barrel. Now I can't tell you that it's going to be more or less accurate because I never fucking tried it. But from what I saw, it made either no difference or they were tearing their rubbers up or their, their rounds were just going fucking everywhere. But I can't say whether that is because they washed it or not uh, because I personally didn't try it. But let's face it, if you're washing the nice shiny coating off of your fucking BBs, then you are basically taking the ammo and you're degrading it. It makes no fucking sense. Do you really need to spend 500 quid on a sniper rifle? No, you don't. It's like anything. If you go out and buy yourself uh, a cheap, well sniper rifle for what, 75, 85 quid from Taiwan gun, it's gonna break way, way, way before the fucking 700 pound rifle that you've seen the other guy using at your local site. It's gonna break earlier, it's gonna break sooner, because it is not made to last for that amount of time. You don't need to spend a huge amount of money on one, but it's going to last longer. Um, if you were to have asked, is it better to spend 500 pound on a bolt action rifle? Yeah, it depends what you want out of it. If you are somebody who wants to go and spend one game, once a month sniping, spend under quid in a seamer, and then bang a new hot rubber in there, you'll probably be absolutely fine if you're using .4s and run the thing at like, you know, 420, 433 per second on a .2. You get it to your nice dual limit, and then off you go and have fun. As and when it breaks, you can then just, if your piston goes, change the piston, it'll cost you a tenner. Change the sears, it'll cost you a tenner. And you could take that route forever. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're firing little balls over fucking there. So it doesn't matter, does it? But if you want a really quiet gun, if you want a really smooth pull on the bolt, if you want to be able to arm the gun, so you pull it back really slowly and gently, 
and then load the BB really slowly and quietly and know the BB isn't going to jump into the fucking cylinder or something, then yeah, okay, um, you're going to have to spend some money to make that happen. I think £500 can be a bit excessive, um, but I'm on the assumption that if you're going to buy a fucking TM VSR 10 and take everything good out of it, you may as well just fucking buy the SEMA and take everything that isn't good out of it and still replace it with the same fucking parts. You will save some money. And let's face it, the SEMA stock on a VSR 10 is infinitely nicer than the TM stock on a TM VSR 10. You're basically paying for longevity. I can make a 100 quid gun fire really nicely, really nicely. The BBs go all the way over there. And when you are towards the end of your range or, you know, effective range of what the gun can do, then people are probably not going to hear that shot fire or know where it's come from anyway. So it's, it, it's not a fuck, it's not the end of the world. If I was going to be out there using a Bolty, which I wouldn't because it bores the piss out of me, but if I was, then I would be doing it with a gun that's got uh, just a few decent little upgrades in it, just to make it feel nicer and sound nicer. Uh, but that's only because I want to spoil myself. You don't need to, uh, but you've got to understand that your gun is going to break quicker because that's just fucking life. Is it possible to make a P90 trigger good or should they just be left alone for the Stargate cosplayers? Well, I quite like a P90 and you know, if you buy the G&G one, it's a bit wank. If you buy the TM, it's perfectly fine. I've got a SEMA and it works absolutely fine. Yes, okay, the trigger's spongy and nasty and yeah, that shit happens. I've done a couple whereby I've taken the, uh, the, the switch assembly out and I've replaced it with a micro switch and that really does help. But that's a lot of effort to try and squeeze in or slide in or snug in a fucking micro switch. Uh, it, it's a lot of effort to do it, but it's entirely plausible. I don't know if anyone knows about me, but apart from Starship Troopers, the first film, I don't like any film or TV show with the word star in the title because I'm not a fucking nerd. And apart from the original Starship Troopers, anything else the word star and it can fuck off and that does include Stargate because it is shit. Did you ever played or worked on HPA guns? A. Why you hate them so much? I don't have in mind wanker speedsoft guns but like nice HPA DMRs. I think you're asking. Have I worked on HPA guns? The answer is no I haven't. Never and I don't intend to. The reason being is I don't know enough about them so therefore I don't touch them. I've had no reason to touch any of the HPA stuff because I don't like it and well that's the end of it really. If uh, you would like my opinion on HPA guns, if someone could make for me a DMR where everything is entirely fucking hidden, anything that's HPA, so hoses, lines, fucking valves and tanks and all this crap if all that shit was hidden inside the gun and i cannot see any of it and the gun looks as good as every other kind of airsoft gun then i may be interested in getting a decent dmr that is hpa however the way it stands is you've got hoses and lines and you've got, you know, the Tipman is reasonably realistic, it's got nice blowback and blah blah blah, but it's still got a fucking hose coming out of it, and it's all plasticky and nasty. And then you've got the guns where you get that big, you get the CO2 bottle, and you can hide it in the back of the gun, but you have to put like one of those slidey fucking ARP kind of stocks over it, and I don't, I don't like it, I just don't like it. I like Airsoft because we've got realistic looking toy guns. That's why I got into this, I liked toy guns, I still like toy guns, realistic imitation firearms. And what we've got is we spent a long time trying to get uh, a defence once the UK decided fuck this noise no one's having it anymore. We spent a long time trying to put together a defence to the Violent Crime Reduction Act and we got that defence so that we could keep realistic looking guns. And the problem we've got now is that too many people are running airsoft guns that don't look realistic and are powered by these hoses and you know they don't feel right they don't just they're just not 
they're not what I believe Airsoft to be. Uh, I'm not saying there's no place for them, I'm just saying that when you've got something like the Violent Crime Reduction Act that we fought so hard to have a defence on, uh, so we can carry on having realistic looking guns, by taking away the realism of our guns, by taking ARPs with the drop stocks and the fucking no fucking barrel shrouds and, and effectively paintball guns, and then making them all bright and shiny colours, and by doing that, what you're doing is taking what we have, our defence, and you're proving to the government that we don't actually need that defence. And I'll be fucked if I'll let that happen. And the same thing goes with the HPA stuff. I want my guns realistic. And if I can see a soda stream fucking tank sticking out the back of it, if I can see a hose coming off of it, it's not realistic. And that's the bit I really do care about. It's the model making part for me that I really enjoy. It's the making of the gun to make it look like it's the real thing, when actually it's not. I have more interest in airsoft guns and replica guns than I do in real guns because I like them, this is what I enjoy. So to have people who are taking it further and further and further away in terms of the realistic look and approach to the gun, it, it could very possibly do us some damage. I'm not saying it definitely will, but um, we are definitely proving to uh, the, the, the powers that be that to enjoy our sport, we don't actually need realistic guns. Because let's face it, you know, it's already been proven that we don't. So if we're not fucking careful, we lose that. And uh, cold day in hell and all that, I don't really want to have to give up all my fucking lovely pretty toys. I couldn't live in Portugal, for example. My wife's Portuguese, I can't live in Portugal. Uh, simply because all my guns would go with me and then I've got to fucking have them all with bright fucking fluorescent yellow stocks and muzzles and things like that. It ain't happening it, not over my fucking dead body. It's not happening. So. Numerous reasons why I don't like HPA, and we're not even talking about the Speedsoft wanker guns, we are talking about what the gun can do. If you hide all that stuff inside the gun, so it still looks realistic, I mean, if. People moan that two-tone guns are not realistic, so the guys that turn up with the blue fucking two-tone guns and whatever else. I, when I was uh, running the airsoft site, we had the police and the military coming in and training, and believe it or not, they were live firearms and they were blue. G36s, LMTs, Glocks, SIGs, they were blue. They were fucking blue. So what are you gonna do? You know? <laughs> so we can't even moan that, you know, the blue fucking Tuto stuff is more dangerous, because it's not, because if you're doing a decent police loadout, if that's the thing you wanna do, um, and you've got an M4 with blue bits on it, you are actually more realistic as a fucking police officer on training than you are the uh, than a police officer look-alike who's got an all-black gun. You know, just saying. Two-tone guns actually keep people in the sport because as long as someone can go out and they can get, you know, they're 14, 15 years old, their parents can get them a nice blue or red or yellow or green gun, they can still go and participate in airsoft. Our numbers are stronger and therefore we do have a better defence. It's only when you go out of your way to make your realistic imitation firearm look as unrealistic as possible, that is when I, I get the fucking arse on. How far approximately should you stuff a HPA gun, it's an HPA gun up the owner's arse if he shoots you full auto? Again, this does entirely depend on the gun and the person. If they've got an HPA gun, they can fire in full auto. If you've got a really wanker fast fucking speedy gun, then you know, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Like, why are we... Uh, uh, I've only got my uh, my gun that does full auto so that I can have the stupid duper and like semi-auto response. Well, okay. So why the fuck don't you program it just to semi then? Why? Because you want to make DSG justice video. I like UMPs. I think they're really cool. I like a UMP. But get that fucking suppressor off and get rid of that fucking handguard. Seriously. What the fuck is going on? And get put a dot sign, it didn't cost you a fiver on there. Fuck. This guy's having a sleep over at his aunt's house. Look at that fucking chandelier. And what is that? What is that above the window? Like, is that fruit? What was that? Why are you even in that room? That's not your room. It shouldn't be your room. I hope it's not your room. More people who don't know how to aim. Just, just thinking aloud. What would happen in real life, okay? Let's assume that this kid here, and let's face it, it's a kid, look at the size of that hand. Uh, this kid, he's at school, and an armed fucking student comes in and starts fucking shooting the place up, right? 
What's he going to do? Let's, let's assume it's two or three armed students. He manages to subdue one. He hits him with a chair, right? He gets hold of the guy's gun. He is now the most useless rogue hero that the school halls will ever fucking see because he needs that many fucking rounds in his gun to hit anything. You know? It makes fuck all sense. Learn some skill, alright? Learn some skill. Jesus fucking Christ. This little softie's got so fucking hot during the day, he's evaporated. Look at that. His mates just found him like that. Remember guys, hydration. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Okay, that's not a bad looking gun actually. Yeah, that's, that's alright. I quite like that. Uh, huh. So we've got an M4 lower, cable tied to a Mark 23, which has an AK scope mount screwed through that with a vert grip on the bottom. I've been sick in my mouth a little bit. There is the world's cheapest dot sight on top of that, and that is held up by a screw in the wall. I know, even my cat is disgusted by this. Nothing like putting your rifle in the window for your neighbours to see, is there? Uh, it looks like a fucking fishy having a shit, doesn't it? But, really? The forward grip mag holdy thing? Like, what's that doing for you? Why is that there? Is there a reason for that? What's going on? Every year the family goes for their photo. Uh, all the lads get on one side, all the women get on the other side. And every year, fucking Terence on the left. Come on, Terry, fucking don't look away when the fucking flash is going off, Terry. Okay, ready? Look at the camera, look cool. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, Terry, you fucking mong. Every fucking year you ruin our fucking group photo. You are such a dick, Terry. It's subtle, it's understated, it's clearly very quiet. I'm pretty sure the owner of this gun is not going to be an absolute wanker. What the fuck is going on here? Someone's taken their MP5 and set it in chocolate. What the fuck is going on here? Meanwhile, the boys over at SEAL Team Murder Boner are having a good day. Look at that fucking paint job. That is epic. Yep, love it. Oh wait, it was me. Ugh, conjoined twins! Oh, freaks! Yep, this guy's got style. Absolutely lovely with shaming there, dude. Oh, I love it, well done. This cunt, not so much. <laughs> this guy thought, yeah, I need the fucking Metal Gear Snake 3 gun, me. I need the Metal Gear Snake 3 gun. I need it, I'm gonna have it. Yeah. You see now, if Metal Gear 3 was uh, perhaps not made by Hideo Kojima, he had nothing to do with it, but instead they got his Mexican non-union equivalent to make the game, you know, that that's the kind of props you're going to get. I can see what you were going for, I, you were trying your best, but you have failed. I know it's a good gun, I know it fires well, everyone knows it's a good gun. But it's also too fucking heavy. The mags are a pain in the ass to use, and I'm sorry, it is uncomfortable. But I will say that I do like that you can retrofit your mags with little tiny dog dicks to push your BBs out. So even when you're emptying your mags at the end of the day, because let's face it, if you're being a sniper at an airsoft fucking event, you are going to be the most grumbling, miserable twat there. So, you know, you get that little bit of giddy thrill and a giggle to yourself when the little pink dog dicks jump out your mags so you know it's the little things in life in it and speaking of school shooters there he fucking is oh my god christ huh okay moving on somebody's arp very clearly got inside the telepods and uh there must be an m4 already in there Oh, that's just fucking horrendous, isn't it? Christ. This is the look of the average airsofter. 
He's just heard the health and safety brief. He's still trying to remember his own fucking name. Look at that look of confusion. He's got absolutely no idea where he is. But to be fair, if you're going to go and play airsoft, yeah, all right. So his four mates are in the background. They don't want to hang around with him. They've just put him to have a cigarette all on his own, look. And then when it comes to game time, they just fucking send the retard. Go walking over there. Go on, Billy. You go walking. And he's like, my name's not Billy. No, of course it's not Billy. Off you go, mate. You go walking. Wait till you find someone on the enemy team and shout really loud for us, okay? We'll come straight over, I promise. Okay. Esso. Yep, absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. Mwah. Fucking well done. Oh, these two have been caught dog in, look. <laughs> mate, mate, don't share my wife, don't share my wife. Bum sausage. Yawn, how very fucking generic. If it didn't have the HPA line coming out of it, I'd be fucking all over that. Love it. Who says you can't snipe and mince at the same time? Well... Big fucking wooden butt plug, top left. Lovely. The shadow at the bottom. You might think it's the guy's camera. It's not. He's got a major stiffy. He's looking at his gun and he knows that thing's going up his fucking ass later on. Yeah, you, you sent this because you thought it was funny. But let's face it, um, even she's not going to fucking air softer. All right. Speed soft powers activate. Form of prick. We used to take the piss out of the fucking sea clamping morons, but now we've got speed softers. Um, this guy looks absolutely legit compared to speed softers. Yeah, enough now, enough. I put this one in here myself uh, because this is exactly how speed softers seem to me. And this, this fucking picture brings me so much joy and happiness. <laughs> Everything about this is just fucking epic. <laughs> How did you get into becoming an airsoft tech? Uh, that is basically, it was kind of by mistake, I guess. Uh, I started off uh, painting model fucking dolls and things, like uh, anime mannequins and whatever else, um, for, for shops when I was like 14, 15 years old, and I got paid in piss all store credit, and I would then spend that money on other things of the same nature and then I realized one day that actually what I was doing was painting dollies and I couldn't get I couldn't continue that before that I'd done games workshop figures and I just couldn't stand the people in games workshop um, I just I didn't want to talk to them don't be fucking near them uh, they they bored the piss out of me and the, just so many of them stank and I had nothing to say to them but um, family didn't have a lot of money, so I used to go in there and use their paints and brushes and sit and paint my figures. Um, and I really enjoyed that, but I didn't want to take part in the games. Before that, it was um, airfix model kits and things like that, and that's how I started out. But fast forward, I, I, I just asked if there was... If somebody told me wanted to have a gun that looked really real, so I went out and bought a busted uh, LS kit. Of a, of a, back in the day, you'd get your airsoft guns in a kit form. You'd actually have to go and buy the fucking kit. So what I'd do is I went out and I bought this kit gun of an LS, LS uh, Beretta and I painted it up to look really real. So glossy frame, sorry, glossy slide, not so glossy frame, uh, sort of gunmetal barrel, put scratch the things on it. And it kind of started there. Um, I preferred the painting rather than the building of it. But as you get into airsoft and you start playing with BB guns, obviously I wasn't allowed BB guns as a kid. Wasn't allowed to watch any horror films or scary films, no violent games. Uh, wasn't allowed to listen to metal music. Look what the fuck happened, right? So when all this started happening, I just... I started building my own guns. And obviously they were fucking shit. They were terrible. Uh, I think every single gun I built had something held on with, uh, with brown parcel tape at some point. Um... But I didn't have the money to get all the decent parts. And back then, you, you couldn't get the decent parts. Like, if you want to make your, your fucking TMAEG fire at... Because um, we've moved on past the original AEGs now. We've suddenly started getting the hop-up style. Um, by the time I started work, uh, the, those power-up kits would come out. You were talking like uh, 250 quid. 
just for the fucking gears and piston and cylinder set to make your gun fire at 330 and that was your only fucking choice and it all just kind of started there and then eventually I realised that I'd stop bodging things together and actually find a decent way of doing it and then it just kind of went from there um, I broke more than I ever managed to fix normal stuff no one just walked into this and was they were really good straight away it doesn't happen that way it, I, I still maintain I got into it completely by mistake everything I've done in my life I've basically done by mistake it, I didn't mean to but that's just the way it ended up fucking hell wall of text what would you consider to be essential for electric DMRs if you were building one from scratch what parts would you use well there's a big difference between me and you I have fucking hundreds of parts of all description for so many different guns just laying there doing fuck all so I can walk out to the workshop at any point in time and just build a gun from scratch and that's just another gun I've got uh, the difference is I know what I can expect from an airsoft gun and because I'm the one who built it I know what I can and can't do should and shouldn't do when it comes down to you guys doing it you are best buying a base gun and not spending a huge amount of money on it. But understand that when you're building a DMR, it needs to have just tighter parameters than a normal AEG and different tighter parameters uh, than if you were building a little speed soft gun. You need to be able to know that your gun is going to fire, it's going to be accurate at a certain range and distance, and you need to know how you're gonna do it. Now, generally speaking, I build DMRs with the assumption that I'm going to be using 0.3s or 0.32s because it depends on the gun, depends on the site the person's using it at. Um, I'm very aware that I've got a couple of DMRs. If I wanted to use it at certain sites, I couldn't because they're running 450 max on the 0.2s because some sites are 420, some sites are 400. There's one site that's actually four, uh, sorry, 375 in the UK for DMRs. You can't cheap out. If you're going to do a DMR, you can't just cheap out on it you need to use a decent barrel, but by decent, when I say the word decent, it doesn't have to be expensive. It has to be reliable with good performance, you know? So you're talking about putting a decent barrel in there, a decent hop rubber, and a decent hop unit that holds its hop well. The rest of it, you want everything to be just smooth. It doesn't even need to fire fast, you know? Trigger response is not the be all and end all of a DMR, but it is very fucking nice to have it there. You know, you don't want to be sat there waiting for the gun to fire as it fires up. And I've seen a lot of guns come through my sites where um, they've had a DMR, they've gone to, a, gone to their retailer, and they've gone, yeah, can you DMR this fucking gun for me? And the retailer just puts a big spring in the gun, M130, M140 spring, stuffs it in the gun, and then takes the selector plate and cuts it. That's it, the gun's dmr And I hear these guns on site, and you hear them firing up like a fucking Ghostbusters proton pack. You know, they pull the fucking trigger, but the person using it is more than happy. He got exactly what he wanted. So we're going to go with how long's a bit of string again. Um, the one type of gun you really shouldn't cheap out on is a DMR. Don't cheap out on a DMR build. Get yourself a decent base gun and don't use stuff with recoil because what's the fucking point? You know, you want a gun that's accurate, don't put fucking recoil with it. Is it possible to have a MG with a very quick trigger response but slow rate of fire without the use of an inline gearbox MOSFET. Uh, I don't really see the point in what... That is just completely pointless. You know, this is why we have vegan chocolate and alcohol-free beer, all right? Just, just saying. Throwing it out there, the info. What's the most fucked gun you've ever seen and what was wrong with it? Uh, well, back at the start of the year, this is not the most, but just one that springs to mind. Somebody sent me an MP5 uh, that he bought off it, uh, some kid at a local airsoft site. And the kid said, yeah, there's a couple of little bits and pieces. He's done the work to it and done some engineering work on it and tech work and it's all good. Uh, the guy sent it to me to get it checked out. And I, I kid you not when I say, aside from the stock that had been modified, there wasn't a single part on the gun that wasn't broken. The gears, piston, piston head, O-rings, rubber, bar everything, the body, for everything was fucked. There was nothing left. There was nothing left. It was just, I, that is right up there. You know, it may as well have been hit by a fucking steamroller. Have you ever owned an airsoft gun that was terrible and no matter what you did to it, it stayed shit, but you loved it anyway? Uh, yeah, 
absolutely. Uh, the Arms Revolution Gas Blowback Tech 9. I waited for a year for that thing to come out. It was a copy of the Maruzen and uh, it had adjustable hop and TM style hop rubber and barrel. I couldn't wait. If you can think of everything that you don't want a gas blowback gun to do and every single failure that a gas blowback gun can fail on and have, it did it. It is fucking a abysmal and it still is not great but i fucking love it i absolutely love it you know the kids nowadays there they just think that you know anything with a nine more mag is cool and they think that any all these chris vex and the things are the greatest thing no fuck off mate so walks up in the street with a chris vector and said give me your money i wouldn't give a shit in the 90s if you walk up to somebody with a tech nine and you stick it in their face you'll give them whatever the fuck you want because that's a deadly looking fucking gun how many beatings has the missus gave you for buying guns? I think you mean given. None. My wife is the coolest fucking person on the planet. She's my best friend and she's just fucking amazing. When I go, hey look, I've just bought five more rifles, she'll say, cool, can I see them? You know, my wife's fucking amazing. I know there are people out there who are completely under the thumb, uh, but, <laughs> well, come on now. Uh, equality and all that. You should be allowed to buy what you want, shouldn't you? Oh, whoops, sorry, did I say that? What causes an AEG to be, in your words, bouncy as fuck, and how do I remedy it? Uh, basically, it's the spring bouncing up and down, hitting the spring guide, hitting the cylinder walls, um, hitting the inside of the piston, things like that. That's what causes that bouncy sound. Uh, if your spring is too short, you know, if your spring is too long, you've got to get the right length of spring inside your gun. g and suffer with it. Uh, I do find that G&G's firing at 400 feet per second like they should be. They don't tend to do it so much, but obviously the lower powered ones, they do it far more. And it is a case of getting a better spring, a better spring guide, a better cylinder and a better piston, and try and get them all by the same brand. That way they're going to mesh up better together. If you really have to, you don't have the money, because let's face it, some people don't have the money, what you can do is take your upper off your lower of your M4 and just put some grease on your spring. Um, that will definitely put some mess inside your fucking gearbox. Um, and if you've got like an um, optical MOSFET, you probably don't want to do that. Got given an ICS MP5, it's over 10 years old. Do I keep it in work and order and sell it? Or do I keep it? Um, keep it. If it's an old one, then it'll look like an MP5. All the new ICS stuff's got weird vents and stuff and stupid stocks, and it doesn't look like an MP5 anymore. You know, fucking scroll back a little bit to, uh, to where I was cutting out guns that don't look like real guns anymore. If you've got an ICS MP5 that's old and looks like an MP5, fucking keep it, it's cool. What winds you up more than airsoft cunts? Uh, cookery shows and sports, basically. Uh, I can't fucking stand these these cookery shows where someone go down, they fucking make a meal, and they, they it's always like a little competition, a fucking quiz, isn't it? Oh yeah, you, you've got to make this fucking meal, you've got to do this thing and make it do a stuff, and they go out of their way to make this over elaborate food that doesn't even look fucking nice the portions are too small and then they'll put the food out three or four people go yeah i really liked it and then one person will go well it's just that i don't like i don't like fudge so i didn't like the meal i wouldn't buy it and that person then loses the fucking competition it's because some cunt don't eat fucking fudge what, what the fuck that's complete nonsense i don't eat fish i don't i don't eat any seafood because it's fucking disgusting i really hate it it's fucking grim so perhaps I should go to one of these fucking world-class fish restaurants, yeah? And I could just sit down and go, no, your food is terrible. Uh, it tastes disgusting. And that makes me the fucking world expert on it. Fuck off. What colour pants are you wearing? I've just come out of your dad's bedroom, so I think it's fair to say I'm not wearing any fucking pants, and neither is he. What's the worst gun to tech on, so I know to stay as far as I can away from it? Um, depends on the person. I really enjoy working on M14s. Most people hate it, but I really, really enjoy working on those. I don't like working on M60s or M249s, not because it's difficult, uh, because they're very easy to work on. It's more bench space, and they're just a fucking asshole. They're, they're too big. They're too big to work on easily, and the amount of times the top cover falls down on my fingers and bites me, uh, I want to throw the cover across the room. So for me, it's 249s and 60s. I fucking hate it. What's your view on the Spetsnaz Arms Edge series now? I haven't heard you complain about them in a while. Well, it's pretty simple. Um, I've not had many on my bench that have been fucked. Uh, all the issues I saw before, they seem to have fixed it and sorted it all out. So I think we're back on track with Spetsnaz Arms. If they're not on my bench, they're not fucked, you know? Your opinions on certain companies charging nearly a thousand pound for a very over-exaggerated recall package upgrade. 
How do I feel about it? Well, the same as I feel about Katie Price and people from The Only Way is Essex and all these fucking ridiculous programmes. People tune in every single week to watch that. Every single day they re-watch it. Uh, they buy the magazines with, with those stupid cunts' faces on because they do. It makes money. So realistically, are those people stupid? Or is it the person who's buying the magazines and watching the fucking programme that's stupid? Let's face it, these people are fucking geniuses. If you're willing to spend a thousand pound on a gun that is worth 500 quid anyway, because you don't feel the performance is adequate enough on your over expensive gun, who's the real asshole here? You know, somebody's offering a service and you're buying it. Who's the stupid one and who's the smart one? That's what I think about it. What gun, in your opinion, is the best out of the box without any upgrades? Honestly, uh, probably the KWA RM4 or the TM Recoil, because if you leave them alone, they work really fucking well for a very long time. It's only when you start to fuck with them, they break down. That and, of course, SEMA AKs, because all fucking day long SEMA AKs. What's the secret gear grease mix? Uh, well, it's 11, uh, 11 herbs and spices. White ball barrels, worth the money, or a bunch of bollocks that don't offer an advantage. The best gun, the best, well, the best range and accuracy I've ever managed to get out of a gun was uh, with a white ball barrel, a flat hop, and a max hop unit. Uh, yeah, okay, so the gun, before I put the, uh, the white ball barrel in, everything is exactly the same inside the gun aside from that it was doing around 480 490 and the range and accuracy was pretty fucking good on fours and then when i put in the wide bore it dropped down to around 390 395 uh but still the same fucking thing the range and accuracy jumps up um was it a fluke i don't know that is one of the few that i've actually fitted where i've gone actually that's pretty fucking good um but honestly, I, I saw a massive improvement in performance. I did, I can't lie. Which tech-related job makes you question reality or make you question reality? People who want to pay me to change the hot rubber on an M4. That, every air softer. Learn how to change your hot rubber. It's a consumable part you need to know. Get your fucking shit together. <laughs>